Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video I'm going to be painting a gigantic uh, crazy looking Games Workshop Rat Ogre for the Blood Bowl mini miniature game. So this is a Forge World resin model and he is quite a beefy specimen. This is quite a beast of a model. Um, so we're going to have some real good fun painting this one and using a few different and uh, very unique techniques as well. So first thing I'm going to start with the skin. Now you've seen me paint skin so many times I thought I'd change things up and just paint it just a little bit different just to give you guys a little bit of a mixture. Now if you also have a rat ogre and you wanted to paint it in a more traditional skin tone I have two really great videos already on my painting channel. One which shows you a few different ways of painting skin using different brands but also another one where I paint Creek Rust Gouger as well and that is using a more traditional uh, skin tone. So for this one what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to paint this guy using a more sort of uh, less traditional sort of copper brown skin. So I'm going to turn this one into a little bit of a, uh, a more sort of brown rat and we're going to paint him in a different kind of skin tone altogether. So I'm starting with a uh, Kokum Copper uh, from scale 75 so I'm just going to use a few uh, different paints on this one just to kind of make this guy stand out and look completely unique um, if you don't have the scale 75 paints or can't get them in your area there are a few alternatives um, I also have a really good video online about how I find uh, different alternative paint brands uh, so that might be worth checking out as well now from there I'm going to move on and paint all of the hair uh, using one of my favorite paints and this is a dark rust 302 now this is a really really cool uh, paint this is a, a really good dark dark brown it takes to the miniature really well uh, it has a really good dark coverage which allows us then to boost the color up a little bit later um, and get a lot more vibrancy out of this so what I'm just gonna do is just base all of those uh, hair areas so all around the neck underneath uh, the, the chin and going under the chest and then also just down and around all of the legs and things like that as well just to make sure that we cover all of those bases from there then we're going to be using the orange brown just to base coat all of the uh, little bit of the uh, the ball that he has in his hand so this rat ogre is, is sort of crushing down a blood bowl in his hand so we're just going to use an orange brown on this and this is just to separate some of those browns so because I use a lot of different earth tones the last thing we want to try uh, the last thing we want to do is to cover all of those colors in a very similar sort of pattern so I like to use a lot of different colors and a lot of different browns so that these parts stand out quite a lot more. We're then going to use a uh, flayed one flash uh, from Citadel and um, for this I'm going to paint all of the strap in uh, but I'm also going to paint uh, a few other little bits as well. I'm just going to make sure just to paint this across all of the bandaging and strapping and things like that here. Uh, just trying to be careful now not to get this onto the skin. doesn't matter at this stage because we are right at the beginning so it doesn't make too much of a difference if you do make a mistake because it's quite easy to fix at this stage. Uh, this is why it's always good to work on the base coats first because as you then progress and you put your wash and you build your layers up uh, then it becomes a little bit more difficult to fix those mistakes. So it's always good to, to sort of uh, not worry too much at the beginning because this base area is a little sloppy and it doesn't matter too much. So as I said I'm just going to do the bandages and then I'm just going to quickly do all of the claws um, and a few things like that so just covering all of the claws the bandaging uh, just a few of the bits that we're going to want to make sure that we get um, like the teeth so that we want these to stand out a little bit uh, sort of like a bone color or a bone white kind of color um, so you can use a bone white from uh, Vallejo if you want uh, I'm just using the flayed one flesh here uh, for this miniature just for this purpose so as you can see just trying to be careful catching all of those teeth bones uh, the bandages and any other bits that you want to really sort of stand off the model because as I say it's gonna have a nice earthy brown skin tone so these light sort of creamy sort of bone colors are really going to stick out what I'm also going to do with this is I'm going to uh, just make sure that I paint all of those different stitches and there are a lot of them so this but does take a while it does require a little bit of patience again you don't have to be perfectly accurate because this is something that will get uh, fixed and hidden and and looked after with things like the wash uh, but just take your time and try to enjoy this bit um, because like I say this bit can be a, a little bit of a chore if you're not massively into painting like fine fine details um, but it is definitely something that's worth working on and spending the time on because this is something that really will stand off the model and make the model pop 
this is one of those details that's really going to allow your model and your miniature, especially on the board, to really, really look the part. So once we've done that, we're going to go on to a burnt red. And with the burnt red, I'm just going to paint uh, the little uh, sort of tabard flap that he's got just down the front here, just painting this in a nice dark, dark red. Again, this is just about giving us uh, the opportunity to build the colours up as we go. So this is literally just being made uh, so that we can build those tones and get a nicer red through. What I'm also going to do with this colour is I'm going to paint this inside of the mouth and the tongue sticking out as well, uh, but that bit I won't be showing uh, on camera, but it's just making sure that I paint those red areas using this nice burnt red to begin. From there I'm also then going to use a pale flesh from Vallejo, and this one is where I'm going to paint things like the nose, the ears, and the tail so I'm going to be painting all of those sort of really really light fleshy colors and the reason why I've picked this pale flesh is because I wanted this to be a sort of light pink color that really stands out but also I didn't want to pick a skin color or anything like that that would sort of blend in or allow the sort of colors to look too similar or be too symmetrical with the, the sort of skin tone that we're using so because we're using that brown skin tone going with this really light sort of vibrant pale flesh tone really will make the, the the ears, the nose and the tail especially really really stand out on this model as well and really allow these colours uh, to pop and again give that vibrancy and create a really nice sort of contrast between the light and dark areas of the model as well. So it's just about trying to create that sort of character through colour as well and that's what we're trying to do. Again we're trying to keep things nice and earthy and nice and uh, toned down and nice and uh, sort of um, uh, sort of quite close on that earthy scale so that when we use our wash and we build these colors back up we're really going to have a model that has colors that have tied together quite nicely. So I'm going to use uh, one of my favorite colors which is a tenebrous gray from the AK Interactive. Again if you don't have this color you can just use a nice flat black. The Vallejo uh, black is a fantastic color. The reason why I choose the AK over it is literally just because this moves much much smoother on my brush so I find this takes to the miniature in a much smoother way for uh, my own personal painting. That doesn't mean that it's a better paint by any stretch of the imagination. Um, the Vallejo black would be equally as brilliant and that's all I'm doing with this is just painting all of the leather straps and preparing these ready for when we build up onto uh, making this nice sort of leather color and leather tone. This is a color that we're going to build up as we go and this is a color that we're going to paint a little bit different to normal leathers. Again just kind of making this video slightly different because if a lot of you have been here and watched me paint a lot of different videos you don't want to see me do the same techniques all the time on the same colors. You want to see different things. So we're painting this model slightly different and creating our own entirely different uh, character out of this one as well. So just trying to be careful with the black because this is kind of a, uh, a definite color. Uh, we don't want to uh, get this on the skin and make any mistakes. From there then I'm going to use a nice flat earth colour and I'm going to paint all of the sort of wooden bits. So this is just a little um, kind of like the um, uh, sort of the wooden area just around the belt here. So I wanted to say like a belt buckle um, but it's a little bit too big to be a belt buckle. So it's kind of like um, just like a wrestler's belt I guess. He's got this really big sort of wooden plaque on his belt but he also has this Skaven symbol as well uh, just across his chest here uh, as well. Now at the moment the colors might seem a little little similar um, but don't worry too much because we will be boosting these in a different way and they will be going in a different sort of tone and texture as we build. So these are again going to stand off each other quite well. Now I'm just going to use a gun metal which is a true metallic metal for this one. You could go for a non-metallic metal if you wanted to uh, but I'm just going with a true metallic metal because it is uh, a quicker and easier way of painting but we're going to make this a really grimy beaten up worn sort of dirty rusty looking silver as well so although it looks really bright to begin with this is something that we're really really going to work on we're going to turn this into a really sort of a grim dark style aggressive sort of uh, rusty uh, rust, uh, rough 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 metal so I'm just going to paint all of the metal areas so the chain all of those little loops and things are on the tail and bits like that just making sure to cover all of it in a nice even coat and not make it too thick And again, as you can see, I'm just trying to be as careful as possible. 
just making sure that I don't get this silver on loads of the other areas that we've already painted uh, because uh, metallic paints generally can be quite thick you don't want to overdo it and paint over uh, areas because you will start to lose detail so it's always worth trying to be a little bit more careful now the dark rust 302 that we used earlier we're going to go back to that just for a second and um, we're just going to paint the uh, pauldron so we're going to paint the pauldron areas here uh, using this dark rust we're also going to paint the inside of the symbol on the rat ogre's back as well now this might seem a little bit counterproductive and this is something that you probably could have done in the first layer as well um, but the reason why i'm going back and i'm doing this is because i'm laying the foundations here for a base where we're going to use something completely different we're going to use a really really unique technique on this one and we're actually going to use the vallejo chipping medium to create a really gnarly grim and sort of rough sort of chipped worn out paint on these shoulders so i'm just painting this brown in here to create a really cool dark color which will give us something to chip underneath this will give us a really sort of rusty dark and grim color underneath the the, the sort of shoulder pad colors that we're going to paint and will allow for us to create this really gnarly gnarly color now on this model I'm using a uh, Vallejo game wash so this is a dipping formula sepia tone this is a fantastic fantastic wash so this comes in a really really big pot um, it, it is used for things like dipping I personally do like to apply this with a brush because it gives me more control over where the paint will uh, will go and also gives me more control where the paint will sit now these uh, sort of washes these dipping formula washes this particular one as well is fantastic um, for allowing you to just cover the model and it looks really really gnarly like I said it looks really grim it looks too dark on times and things like that but once this dries it dries into a really cool sort of matte down finish and this allows us then to really build those colors back up the only colors that we're not going to build back up is those sort of silvers because we want this to look really grimy so I'm just covering all of the model using this and then we're going to start building those layers back up from there as you can see, the wash has dried down to a really cool matte effect. It's tied all those colors together, but unfortunately, it has taken a little bit of the vibrance and the lightness out. So, we're now going to apply all of those colors back in and build that vibrance back up and create a really cool character out of this. So, starting again, going right back to the beginning, we're going to use that Kokum Copper, and we're just going to start to build up the skin tones. So, I've added a little bit of water into this, just a little bit, so that it flows onto the miniature nice and evenly. The Scale 75 paints that I I'm using are really really great for uh, blending they tend to work really well with things like wet blending they uh, tone down really well with uh, with water they um, uh, become really really thin which is a really great way of painting because as you start to build up those layers it gives you the opportunity to build multiple layers to create the vibrancy that you really really want to get out of the model you don't need to go in sort of one thick coat and done you can really build these layers up and that creates a lot more tone texture definition to the model but it also creates a lot more character to your model as well so it's worth spending that little bit of extra time especially on some of these big areas that you know are going to be um, looked at more on a miniature so if you've got a model that consists mostly of skin spending a lot more time on getting that skin really really great will allow your model to look that much better because of it so from there, I'm going to use the Kokum Copper and a peanut butter, and I'm just going to use these in a half and half. Um, like I said, you don't have to follow this one. I know I'm using a little bit of an obscure paint brand here or something that not everyone is used to using. Um, but if you wanted to, you can paint yours using the traditional skin method. That's absolutely fine. I just wanted to do something a little bit different just to give you guys an option, a choice, and give you guys sort of a, an idea. I mean, even if you can't get the exact same paints, uh, just, just to let you guys know that you can paint skin with a sort of light kind of brown or like a tau ochre kind of color you know you can do all these different things you don't have to just stick to the same uh, tried and tested technique you can mix and match and try anything you like like I said they're your miniatures uh, you can paint them however you like you know you go for it you enjoy it it's your hobby time make sure that you have fun while painting and ultimately that's all that matters is as long as we're having fun we're painting we're playing the, then the hobby is always going to be a great place uh, for, for newcomers and old guard alike.
So as you can see, I'm just using a nice thin down mixture of these two paints and using this half stop between, like I've done so before on the channel, which is using a half stop just to kind of build that vibrancy and to create a real nice transition from that darker, darker base color, and we're just gonna build that up through. And the more layers that we go, and the more half stops that we go, the more sort of natural and neutral that transition will become on the model, and it will allow the model to look a lot cooler and a lot more sort of natural and pleasing to the eye and things like that. So as you can see, I'm just trying to be careful here. I'm purposefully avoiding the scars just on his back because I'm gonna do something a little different with the scars. Um, so yeah. Once that's done, we've done the base, the half stop, and now we're going for the highlight. I'm just gonna use the peanut butter on its own. So the peanut butter, um, I can't find a direct, exact sort of tone for this, um, but just using sort of, as you can see, it's kind of like a yellowy bronze kind of color. So using sort of a, a, a mix of sort of a, a base sort of color, like when I mentioned sort of like an ochre and things like that, has a very similar sort of property where you get this sort of brownish tone, but also a little bit of yellow showing through as well. So it's just about creating that that um, texture and tone and color and vibrancy and things like that. So as I say, you don't have to follow the exact same pattern and the exact same paints. I know there's a lot of people out there that want to stick specifically to the paints they've got and things like that. That's absolutely fine. It's no issues, no trouble. It's just giving you guys an idea as to how I've built this sort of model and how I've painted this one. And even if out of all of this painting and this entire video, the only thing that you take from it is how to use the chipping medium, then I'm ultimately happy because at least you guys have gained something from it anyway it's just i was painting this one for my friend and i wanted to show you guys how i've done it it's as simple as that that's the cool thing about having a youtube channel and a way to paint for you guys is it gives me the opportunity to paint loads of different things uh, paint how i want to paint try out different techniques try out different paints and then i can just kind of give you guys advice on sort of which ones work well which ones i've enjoyed and things like that uh, but also, like I say, I just love painting models. Doesn't matter what paints we use, doesn't matter what models they are, I just enjoy painting. So from there, what I'm gonna do is a final highlight of medium flesh tones. So this is a Vallejo color, and I'm using a medium flesh tone. And again, you can see that I've used a little bit of water to this to kind of create a little bit of a glaze almost. So I'm creating a nice thin layer of this color. And now I'm being very, very specific about where I'm placing this because this is now going to be our highlight layer. I want this just to stand out on certain parts, just to allow those highlights to boost and to look really nice and vibrant. And again, it's adding to that tone, that texture, that definition on the model, kind of creating a little bit more texture to the skin than it just being one flat color. Um, and you can use a mixture of different techniques, whether it's using the very tip of the brush to use the scratching techniques as we've done on the channel, or even if it's just the stippling technique that you prefer. You know, there's loads and loads and loads of different ways that you can go about painting a, a model like this one. So there we go, you can see that I'm just trying to be careful again, making sure that I'm not painting this on any of those stitches, avoiding the scars and things like that. We're gonna paint the scars in a completely different color, so again, these will stand out off the model. And as you can see, I'm just being nice and rough and just using the brush nice and quick and just mixing some of this nice thin color all the way around. From there, I'm gonna use a small amount of purple tone. And with the purple tone, I'm just gonna add this purple tone just in between all of these little cracks here. And the reason why I'm using this is just because I wanted this to look a little bit more bruised. Now, you might think that I'm using this after we've applied our skin tone, and I am. And the reason for that is because some of this purple you want to seep out of that area. You kind of want some of this purple to be sticking onto the, the, the skin tone so that it kind of not dulls it down, but kind of adds that purple kind of bruising sort of color, that purple kind of tone, so that it makes these scars and these, these sort of stitches and things look really, really grim. So yeah, just trying to be very careful where we place this because we kind of don't want to overdo this on the skin, but we do kind of want to have that little bit of the bruising, as I say. So just trying to be careful there. And apologies if you can hear my tiny dog growling in the background. Uh, she's hearing someone pass in the house and she's being very protective, trying to look after me as best she can. 
So from there, I'm going to go to beige red. Now, this is a color that if you followed the channel is a color that you will know quite well. This is how I normally base my skin tones. So what we're going to do with the beige red today is instead of painting all of the skin in this, we're just going to use this to pick out all of those scars. So he has these two really cool grim looking scars just running down his back here. Uh, but also down the back, what I'm going to do again, just making things just a little bit different. We're actually going to paint all of these areas just poking out down his back. Now, I couldn't make out whether or not this was supposed to be hair. So what I've done instead is I'm going to use this skin color and I'm going to turn this into sort of like a burn. So it's going to look really sort of, uh, again, really gnarly, but it's also going to look uh, kind of like a burn on this guy. So it looks like he's been burned in the past while playing Blood Bowl. And now he's just left with this sort of scar tissue just down his back. Now, again, if you wanted to, you could paint this as hair or fur or anything like that, if you like. Again, I'm just trying different techniques and trying things out just to kind of give you guys a choice of seeing something different and just to see sort of how some of these colors and tones will show through as well now once that beige red is dry we're going to use a little bit of basic skin tone again just picking out some of the very very edges and some of the the very sort of um, extreme areas just so that it looks really light and vibrant and raw and sort of like I say like a sort of fleshy color um, so this is the idea behind this is that he's got his normal skin tone he's been burnt just on his back and now he's got this sort of scar tissue uh, just just there as you can see Again, the cool thing is that's giving us a really cool contrast between his skin tone and that scar tissue and just allowing it to pop and burst off the miniature as well. So from there, we're going back to our flayed one flash and we're going to start to pick out all of those um, staples, all of those little stitches and all of those little bits once again. Again, like I said, I know this is a really sort of long um, and difficult sort of area. This is the bit where you need to have uh, a little bit more of your uh, sort of focus on uh, because these, these, these can be a little bit daunting. Uh, but don't worry too much. Like I say, try to have fun with it. Try to enjoy it. Uh, try to use the very, very tip of your brush and just slowly build them up. Do them in stages. Do one part and then come back at another time if you need to. Just try to enjoy it. Once that's dry, we're then going to use the Pallid Witch Flesh, and I'm just going to add this just across the top area of those stitches as well. And the idea with this is, again, it's all about that vibrancy, it's all about that contrast. So this is going to give us a nice sort of uh, lightish sort of uh, color, nice sort of light tone, a nice white color, which is going to allow this to really stand off that brown skin tone. And again, you can see that vibrance, that difference, that, that, that contrast that we've got between the sort of light, light colors, and then, of course, that sort of yellowy brown skin tone as well which is really really cool I really enjoy painting in different ways and painting sort of different models in different ways as well it, it sort of gives me a little bit of uh, a fun side of just being creative and just making my own stuff up you know and it's really cool to just try certain things I know a lot of people paint sort of rat ogres with greens and all these things and you're more than welcome to do so that's great uh, we I, you know on this channel we just like to do things just a little bit different so we're going to use the reds now we're going to use a heavy red just down on this tabard here and as you can see what i'm doing here is using the very tip of the brush i'm going to follow the folds but i'm going to leave that darker color inside the fold so we're just going to pick out some of those areas just around the outside and then around the edges and you can already see that that's given us a real nice uh, sort of contrast and definition between those folds you can see that darker area and you can also see that light light red color already starting to show through now this heavy red will dry down darker than it looks so we will go through a couple of different layers and build this vibrancy up in a different way. Don't forget as well, like I said, I've also painted the tongue and the inside of the mouth. So we're going to do that as well. So once that bit is done, we're going to use a carmine red. And a carmine red then is just a light shade or a shade lighter. It's just one shade or one stop slightly lighter. And as you can see, then we're going to just be a little bit more careful of where we place this. And again, we're just going to build this up on the raised edges of those folds. And now you can see that sort of tone, texture and contrast really starting to boost and really starting to pop off that, that part of the model. And again, that red now is a completely different color and tone to what we've been using. So it really does stand out and catches your eye. 
Once that's done, I'm going to use a bloody red. Again, one of my favorite colors, partly in name because bloody red is a fantastic name for a color, but also it's one of my favorite colors because this is a fantastic highlight color. As you can see, I'm being a lot more careful as to where I place this, and this now is really going to put that icing on the cake and boost that vibrancy through the red. We're really going to get a nice, nice tone. Look at that. Now we're getting some really, really great tones through that red. You can see from that dark red, right up to that really nice highlight. It's such a simple technique, but it looks fantastic. Now once that area is done, we're then going to move on to the bone white. So the bone white now I'm going to use for the claws, the teeth, and all things like that. So we're going to be very, very careful now and using the very tip of the brush once again. So this is a size zero brush as well. I know I get asked quite often about what size brushes I use. This is a size zero brush. So I'm using the very tip of a size zero brush using this bone white color. And we're just going to build those uh, sort of details. So we're building those teeth first. And you can see those teeth are starting to look really really grim and it's cool again because like I say that dark skin tone that darker color with these sort of light light teeth really really does stand out it adds a lot more to the character than just being all flat tones flat colors and things like that we're gonna do the same thing here just on this big horn sticking out of his shoulder and as you can see I'm just building this up in slow layers and what I'm doing is I'm just using slow slow motions almost like a sketch in motion so if you've ever drawn a picture and you've sketched things out first I'm doing the same thing I'm just trying to sketch this out using the very tip of the brush and just slowly follow the line so I'm following the direction that this horn is going so as you can see we're using up and down strokes and the reason for that is because we're gonna kind of make sure that the the horn does look like it has that tone and that depth and those those sort of creases and uh, not so much folds but those sort of creases and, and bits of depth and deeper parts and recesses in that that horn and in the way that it, it sort of um, it's sort of grown in them. doing the exact same thing just on the nails as you can see just trying to be very 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 careful um, and just building that up in the same way very tip of the brush and just that way now from there with bone white, as you know, again, if you've watched the channel or if you've watched me paint before, Elphic Flesh is a fantastic and possibly the perfect highlight to uh, the bone white. So we're just going to use that to build, again, the same technique. Like we're just using that very, very tip of the brush and we're just going to slowly follow the lines up just to create that element of sort of um, that, that definition, that depth, as you can see. There we go, just like so. And again, just using that sort of sketch in motion, you see? So I'm just slowly putting very, very small amounts of paint back onto the model as well. Now with the bone white, I've also painted, as you can see, all of the bandages as well. So all of the bandages have been painted using the bone white color, just the same as we had done with the teeth and the, uh, the, the, the horn. And then using that elfic flesh, we're just gonna carefully pick out some of the, the details. So we're just gonna go around some of the edges rather than the whole area of these bandages. And as you can see then, they start to give a little bit of a different kind of depth and tone and texture. And again, that really light, light sort of bone white, that whitish color on that sort of darker brown with that dark brown sitting in the wash uh, that, that dark brown wash sitting in those recess points it ties things together but it also creates that that depth it also creates that contrast I know I say this all the time uh, but it's for a reason it's because it does build these areas so from there then I'm going to use a dark rust 302 and a leather brown both from Vallejo and I'm going to slowly then using half and half of each paint so it's 50 50 so it's one blob of each paint I'm going to slowly then again using the tip of the brush just start to build all of the area where the fur is so we're just going to build all of the fur areas um, again you could dry brush this if you wanted to as you know I'm not a massive fan of dry brushing on the channel not that it's a bad technique but sometimes it could be messy um, so I like to show you guys painting in a slightly different way just to kind of build your confidence and things like that as well so as you can see I'm just building uh, each one of these little bits of fur up using this color and again because we've got that dark dark tone underneath that's also going to build our, our sort of contrast and our tone and everything through it in that sense as well we're not just going to do it on the back we're going to do it all up and around the head the neck and the face and as you can see just using the tip of the brush just picking out all of those little bits of hair by doing it this way it will give you a lot more confidence with your painting it will give you a little bit more sort of pride as well in your painting when you look at your finished piece uh, because your model isn't just going to be quickly dry brushed it's going to have a little bit more control and once that's dry we're just going to use the leather brown on its own and as you can see now we're just going to very uh, 
quickly pick out some of the very very fine edges so this time we're using the brush to create a few of our own little textures and layers as well so as you can see I'm trying to use the brush to pick uh, sort of following the um, like I did with the horn so what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the motion of the fur and as you can see I'm just picking dab in little bits so it's almost like a little bit of a stippling as well so it's creating these small textures of fur in between the actual big chunks of fur as well so we're not just using one flat base one flat color you can see I'm using a lot of short short bursts with this paintbrush and it creates that texture creates that that definition as well see there we go see just like so so we're actually building this color really really nicely now and again although this leather brown has a similar kind of color to that skin that we've used it is different enough to separate the hair and the skin from each other so these colors aren't then completely the same they're not the uh, the exact same tone they're not going to blend into each other or anything like that but it does tie the model together it does tie these colors in so that it gives you that illusion that he is supposed to be this sort of uh, brown kind of skin tone or this sort of um, brown kind of color um, uh, sort of with his, his sort of um, his hair and all these different things so it ties these colors together it ties all of this sort of um, this this leather brown kind of illusion together so as I said we were going to try something a little bit different with the leathers so instead of using the AK interactive we're going to use the Vallejo leathers with this one and we're going to start with a flat brown now with these leathers and with these colors these are a little bit more sort of uh, red so we've got kind of a red leather color with this one so what I'm doing with this is I'm just going to use this paint and I'm using again as you can see at the very edge of the brush and I'm not using a lot of paint and instead of painting this as a, a full sort of one color you can see I'm using a stipple in but also a really sort of scratchy kind of technique as well so what we want to try and achieve with this is we want the leathers to look worn scratched battered be uh, beaten up and things like that so by using that kind of scratchy technique with the brush it creates that illusion for us as well so we don't have to work too hard to get this really really great looking color and really great looking tone so once that flat brown is dry I'm gonna use a mahogany brown which is a really great sort of ready uh, brown color as well and this then I'm gonna use in the same way just using those scratchy techniques the stippling technique and I'm gonna pick out some more of the details just on the leathers and this is gonna create an illusion as I said earlier of a worn out beaten up uh, leather color now I'm also going to use a uh, red leather as well so just going to use this to pick out the very 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 edges as you can see just picking out some of the very extreme edges and possibly also just using this to pick one or two little scratches going right the way across or right the way through the leathers and again you don't need to paint too much you don't need too much paint on your brush this is all just a case of just adding small amounts and working up from there less is more less is more with techniques like this you don't want to go overboard you want to use it in small bursts see how you go and then add more as you go so it's not something you want to go really over the top you kind of want to start small there you go just like so with with very very small uh, bits of color and then build up and if you think it needs more you add more it's always easier to add more than it is to take more off so if you overdo it it's hard to go back and redo so we're going to start off then uh, we're going to go into using the chipping medium now this is a completely different technique so this is something different to anything I've ever used on the channel so what we're going to do with this chipping medium is we're going to use the chipping medium and we're going to paint this across the shoulder pads and the symbol area that he's got just on his back now the reason we're going to do this is because we're going to paint up a uh, color on here and then we're going to have fun picking the color back off so this is going to be a really interesting way of painting really like I say gnarly grim beaten up worn out sort of uh, technique so we're just going to do this uh, just trying to be careful where we place it I mean you can see it's pretty easy to manipulate I'm just manipulating this across the shoulders now I'm going to leave that to dry so it does say to leave it for quite a while now I've left this for a good couple of hours and it still looks like it's a little bit wet so if you want to leave it a little bit longer you absolutely can it does say to leave it for a while before putting paint on top so I would give it a little bit longer than I have here um, I just got a little bit excited to show you guys sort of how this works from there then I'm using a sick green color uh, that's just the name of the color it's not like a sick green like 
this color is sick. Um, and this is a really cool sort of skaven kind of grimy green color. And that's all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cover all of those areas where I put the chipping medium. And I'm just gonna cover all of those areas in a nice, flat, even tone of paint. Like I say, let the chipping medium dry for quite a while. I would probably recommend leaving it dry overnight. So if you're gonna plan this as a technique, uh, let the chipping medium dry overnight and then come back to doing your chipping and things the next day. That's probably the best way to do it. So what we're gonna do is, you can see on the back there that I've created a cool chipping effect. And that's all you do is use a small brush to add water onto the paint that you've applied to the miniature. And then I'm just using a very small uh, toothpick. So I'm just using a very, very small bit of wood. So a toothpick, a hard brush, if you've got sort of a hard brush or a, an old toothbrush that you don't use or anything like that. And that's all I'm doing then is I'm just scraping and using the very tip of this little wooden stick to just pick some of the color and pick some of the paint off, like so. And then it creates this really cool, like I say, I've been using this word gnarly a lot. It creates this really cool, really sort of oxidized, broken down, rough paint, you know, and it really suits this scheme and it really suits the sort of worn out, battered sort of color scheme. And what I'm doing with my thumb, as you can see, I'm pressing on the model quite a lot. All I'm doing is where some of the paint is coming off, I'm pressing it back down onto the model. So it creates this, like, like I say, that texture, that illusion that the paint is sort of chipping away but it's still sticking to itself and all these cool things you know and it looks really really awesome it's such a cool technique i had a load of fun with it probably more fun than i needed to so when when you do it really go for it it's a great 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 technique now using something else that's completely different, I haven't used this on the channel yet either, I don't think. So what I'm using here is I'm using a crusted rust deposit from AK Interactive. And this is the medium rust deposit. Now this comes out of the brush, sorry, it comes out of the tub onto the brush lighter than you think it's going to be. So when you place this on a model, you think, ooh, it's a little bit bright, but it's not actually as bright as you'd expect because it does dry down quite well. And any areas that you might feel are too bright, uh, you can always add just a little bit of a brown wash on top and that will take out that brightness and that vibrance anyway. And that's all I'm doing, as you can see, I'm using a very, very, very small amount with a battered and beaten up old worn brush. And I'm just using a stippling effect to pick some areas where I want rust and grime and bits to be sat. And again, this is adding to that really sort of grim and grimy and messed up sort of look that we've got for our, our crazy sort of uh, rat ogre here. And you can see sort of how rusty and awful this kind of character is. I mean, you know, it's a giant rat. You don't want him to be looking really nice and clean and friendly you want this guy to be really gnarly you know so yeah just dabbing that using the stippling effect and it will create a cool cool effect for you now we're just going to add a little bit more of that orange brown back onto the ball that he's got in his hand as you can see just being very very careful here trying to get this on just the ball itself and again i've used a little bit of water just so that this manipulates and moves onto the miniature in a nice even fashion nice and straightforward as you can see There we go, just painting a little bit just around the ball. And that will again create that vibrancy, create that difference between that orange color and the yellow sort of brown that we've got for the skin. And then as I said, we're gonna use the flat earth then just to pick out those wooden areas and the symbol areas as well. So as you can see, I'm just gonna carefully pick around this and paint the, uh, the symbol just in the center as well, like so. Just painting this up and being as careful as possible not to get this on anything else because now we're kind of getting towards the end stages and towards the end area of, uh, of our painting. We don't want to make too many mistakes at this stage because we'll have to go back and sort of redo areas and things like that. So yeah, just being very, very careful. Again, very, very small stippling effect using the scratching effect that I, I normally use with the paintbrush, just using the very tip of the brush to just move and scratch bits around as you can see. And it's just starting to look really, really cool. All those different uh, brown tones and all those different earthy tones are really starting to make this guy look really, really unique. 
So then from there we're going to use this beige brown and this is a perfect step up then in terms of the highlighting and we're going to do the exact same thing we're just going to pick out some of the details on these little wooden brown areas and this then is going to tie into being a little bit more creamy a little bit lighter of a brown uh, sort of tone in comparison to what we've done to the skin and again that's really going to allow this color to stand off the model and really allow the model to be its own character and look in its own completely different way like I said, you don't have to follow every stage that I do, you don't have to follow the entire thing. It's mostly just a guide and to give you guys an idea as to how I paint and things like that. So we're going to use uh, that sort of um, beige brown and we're also going to use a bone white and we're going to use sort of a mixture, again, just 50-50 as I normally like to. And this time we're going to be very, very careful about where we put in our, our highlights. As you can see, I'm just trying to pick the areas just across the top so that this looks like the light is just catching across that wooded area and maybe one or two scratches. Not loads because this is just showing through a few little bits of worn area and this is creating that, that depth and that, that tone again. There you go, as you can see, just across the top areas, just like so, and it is starting to look really, really great. There we go. Excellent. So now we're going to go back to the pale flash, and we're going to pick out those really nice, vibrant sort of skin kind of colors, so across the nose, across the ears, and of course the tail as well. Now the ears are great because there are a lot of different folds and details in the ears as well, which will add to that texture, so it's going to add to that character. You don't want everything to be too lovely and, and bright and, and things like that. So as you can see, just picking out the, the areas where the wash isn't sat, using a little bit of a stippling effect just across the nose to create that texture as well, so he looks a little bit more organic and it's not too flat. Yeah, see, we're getting getting used to these techniques now, and we're starting to use these techniques in a really cool and really different sort of way, and we're starting to build some real cool characters out of these techniques. So using that color as well, as you can see, I'm just going to take my time now on the tail, and I'm just going to pick out all of those different bands of the tail, all of those different... Um, ridges and things like that. I'm going to try to leave some of the wash in between and again that's tying those colors together, tying it into a little bit more of a fleshy kind of color and sort of tying it a little bit more to the skin color that we've used as well. That sepia tone wash has done a lot of work for us so we didn't have to make too much work. We haven't had to do too much work because that flesh, uh, that sepia wash has done loads for us. And that's allowing us then to build these colors back up, but also allow those colors to be tied together, as you can see. And it's really great that we can get it um, in such a, such a simple way. From there, I'm just going to use a small uh, amount of livery green, and I'm just going to paint his eyes using livery green. So this is a really vibrant, vibrant, bright green. It's like Moot Green from Games Workshop, and literally we're just going to put this in his beady little eyes. They are beady little eyes, considering how massive the model is, his eyes are uh, very, very small and beady, um, as a rat should be. So we're just going to paint this uh, livery green in with those uh, beady little eyes, just to make those really, really pop. And like I said to you the other day in one of my other videos about the red and the green and the contrasting colors, that red tongue, the green eyes, see, it makes him look really, really different. So just using that gunmetal again, I'm just gonna now pick out the very, very, very small rivets that we've got. As you can see, I'm just being as careful as possible to pick out these small rivets and these small detailed points. There isn't one on the bottom, I did check. Just like so, just picking out those little bolts that are on this wood so that uh, so you get that little bit of extra detail and it really stands out. And again, these are those small fine details that really make your model uh, sort of the complete article and the finished piece. So I'm going to use a small amount of military shader. Again, you could use a Thonian camo shade if you're using Games Workshop. And that's all I'm doing is placing this in the eye socket now that that green has dried. And the reason for this is it's just going to tie that green in so that the green will look like that it's shining out of a darker green sort of recess, which is great. That's what we want. We want to tie that green together. We don't want that green to look too um, like it stands out and it's not connected to anything. So that little wash, once it dries in, will tie that color in lovely. From there, I'm also gonna add a small amount of violet red, and this is a very, very small amount. This is a layer, and again, this is purely optional. You don't have to do this if you don't want. And that's all I'm doing is just adding a small amount of this violet red, this sort of purpley red color, just across the veins on his arms. And it's just gonna create this sort of like um, illusion that he's got this sort of super 
like crazy veins poking out of his arms and again creating that 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 sort of contrast you know so I'm going back to my favorite my bloody red and I'm just adding this onto all those little boils again if you wanted to you could use the green instead if you want yours to be all pus filled and horrible and grimy um, I'm just doing mine red because again it's a slightly different color to that green those opposites will allow the red to really really stand on the miniature I made a point of saying that the red won't pop because we painted boils because I didn't want to fill you guys with that kind of um, mental image um but i guess i already have <laughs> so yeah just painting all of those little boils and all those little areas and then i'm using a small amount of the citadel technical blood for the blood god and that's all i'm doing as you can see is painting this into the scratches that he's got on his arm and again using a nice stippling technique the uh the rule with this that i always say to people is less is more less is more with blood for the blood god you don't want to overdo uh, the blood you know cover the entire model cover all of his hands in it and things like that uh, because it becomes uh, too extreme and you lose all of that detail that you've made and all in all that is my rat ogre complete it's painted completely in my way full of my own techniques and styles and paints and different paint brands and i hope you guys like it please let me know in the comments below what you think uh, what parts you really love what parts you don't i always love to hear from you thank you so much for all of your patience and for all all of the lovely messages you said while I've been unwell. Sorry it's taken me a little bit of a while to get back to uh, making videos, um, but I will be making more. I absolutely love the painting and thank you all so much for the positivity, kindness, the support, uh, the likes, the comments, everything. I can't thank you guys enough. I love painting models um, and I, I love how much you guys have, have enjoyed sort of the videos I've been making. So as always my friends, please take care of yourselves and I will see you guys on the next one.